All right. Well, there we go. I hope everyone's suitably pumped up after that intro. Uh, welcome, one and all. It's the drinker here, and it's uh, well, it's a slightly unusual thing for me to be doing a stream on like a Tuesday night. But uh, this is one of the few nights this week when I'm actually available, and I really wanted to do something like this because. Uh, obviously, we launched the Kickstarter for, for Rogue Elements a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> you don't need me to tell you the response has been pretty fucking incredible for that. Um, and yeah, as a result, well, there's a lot of interest in it and people have a lot of questions about you know what we're going to be doing, um, what the production's looking like, um, what's going on behind the scenes and how this all got started. So figured like the easiest way of doing this was just to to do a stream um bring the director on and um you know we can do our best to answer a few questions and um yeah i guess make sense of all this crazy stuff that's going on and um yeah hopefully you know illuminate you guys a little bit more on, on how this stuff gets put together so i guess without further ado i will bring on travis grant who is the director of this short film hey man hey how's it going Good, thanks. It's uh, it's good to have you on for this. Um, yeah, yeah, I know we've obviously talked. On. We've talked loads back, um, you know, backstage and and uh, previous to this. But uh, this is the first time we've done like a live stream together, and everyone's got a chance to meet you. So thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Nice one. Um, so yeah, I, I guess um, where should we start? Just like how how this all got kicked off, like how you got in touch with me, and and how we got started, I suppose. Um, yeah, I'm almost so. starting to get a bit hazy on it myself. <laughs> well, I'll give you my point of view, and then maybe you can give everyone your point of view, because I still don't know what your thought process was. So uh, a little bit of background on myself. I'm a filmmaker. I, I went to film school in Vancouver in 2008, 2009, and since then I've been professionally making films, lots of short films, some fairly decent budget short films, low budget short films. And this, through the, this whole time, I've been working on a, a feature film with my uh, production team. And we've gotten like close a bunch of times. And the closest we got was just as the world started going crazy for a little bit there. And uh, that kind of shut that down. And while that was going on, um, I had started, I've been watching your videos for, for a long time. And I was like, man, this guy talks a lot of shit. <laughs> and, uh, not Nothing's that I changed. <laughs> not that I disagree, uh, um, but I was like. And then I realized that you wrote novels, and I'm like, I wonder if he can back up what he's talking about. So I got your first novel, and I read it, and I was like, this is pretty good. Um, and then I got the second novel, and your the first chapter of the second novel is like infinitely better than your entire first novel. And that's not to say your first novel is bad or anything. I'm just saying like the the quality of your writing skills like jump leaps and bounds. And I was like super excited about this world that you had built. And um, so as I was sitting there, I was like, mm, I got nothing else going on here. I was like, maybe. And so I wrote an email and I was like, hey, look, I'm a filmmaker, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I need you more than you need me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I was totally expecting to be stonewalled or, or whatever. And I was pleasantly surprised um, when you got back to me uh, a little while later. And then we just went back and forth from there. And, and uh, the Kickstarter blew up. And well, here we are. Yeah, it's been kind of a wild ride. I mean, it, it was a funny one because, yeah, you got in touch by email and um, obviously a lot of people do. And, you know, they have various proposals and ideas and stuff. And, you know, in an ideal world, yeah, you could uh, you could pursue all of them. But, you know, you eventually you just have to realize there's not enough time and you have to be really selective about what you do. And I think it was just random chance really that i looked at some of the links that you provided for like because you put some of your stuff up on youtube so people could view it um and I, I took a look at a couple of them and it was like holy shit like this guy has produced actual good stuff it's not just you know some you know amateur who's just doing something on his iphone with his friends it's it's like an actual professional looking production and this was mostly i think done with pretty limited budget and resources but you were able to produce that uh, and so it was like, damn, that, that's actually pretty impressive. And um, we got talking and yeah, it was like, I think this guy's actually pretty serious about making a good project here. Like you'd clearly, you know, read up on the books and stuff and you actually understood the characters and, and um, the kind of world that had been created there. And I thought, well, it's, you know, it's worth taking a shot on this and see what we can do. And that was when we started working on a script. 
Um, and initially, and this is for, for people that are watching as well, um, you know, we, we talked about how, how we could fund it and what how much money would be needed just to do even a really simple story. And it was like, okay, I wrote that, that first draft of the script with that in mind, thinking, okay, you know, we might be working with a shoestring budget here. We might have like half a dozen actors and we've got to just make the most of it. So kept it really simple. Um, and, you know, that was what gave us our start. Uh, and then obviously since we've run the Kickstarter and it's been this crazy thing where we've gotten way more than we initially uh, expected, now we're in that position where we can start, you know, we've we've bulked the script out, we've, we've probably doubled the runtime, we've put in lots more action characters, um, you know, um, development of the story, uh, and I can talk more about that later, or at least as much as I'm allowed to say. Um, right. But yeah, it's been a great fun experience to do that because it's like we've gone from like having basically nothing to like, yeah, we can we can do some really interesting things with this now. But um, yeah, it was all based on just having those initial conversations and uh, realizing that yourself and, and the, you know, Max and the other guys that you've been working with, uh, one, you know your stuff and two, you're serious about doing a proper uh, proper production on this one. So that was enough to get it going. And I'm glad we did. Yeah, man, like I was so serious about doing this right. Like I remember offering to get on an airplane to fly over to take your <laughs> hand <laughs> and be like, nah, I want to do this and I want to do it right. I don't care if we get $100. I'll uh, I'll call in every favor that I've built up in the last 15 years and shoot this thing. Uh, yeah. I'm glad I don't have to do that. Uh, I'm glad we have some money to do that now. But uh, yeah, yeah, super pumped. Yeah, no, so, and that's, you know, it's worked out great. And um, we're in this very fortunate position now where, you know, we've got the resources now to do good stuff. Um, we have people behind us who uh, who know what they're doing, you know, and you, for anyone who's back the Kickstarter, you can see some of the footage that we've put up there of like the the, the stunt choreographers, like going through some of the routines that they've done as, as a sort of showcase of what they're capable of, just in a, in a kind of, um, you know, simple, mocked up set environment just to show how they do these things um and it's great you know these these people are going to be the ones who are choreographing the fight scenes in this uh, in this short film um and they, they know their stuff they've worked on some serious productions in their time so all that stuff is great like there are people lots of people working on this who really know what they're doing and i guess that's one of the things to to stress here yeah, and the other thing that's super humbling is I've been getting a lot of messages um, either forwarded from you or directly to me of people like literally all over the world who are just like, hey, how can I help type thing. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> I've so humbling. many emails. It's like, you know, soundtrack people, editors, uh, stunt yeah. guys, just military vets who, who who can lend their expertise. Like all these people have come forward offering to help out. It's It's been awesome. Like the response has been incredible. Um and I, I was talking with Mahler about this the other night, you know, between this, between um, the Ripaverse, you know, from from Eric July, um, you know, guys like Shad, who have got their own like graphic novel projects and novels and stuff. And, and the go, I think he's working on a, a film as well or a short film. Um, it, it's like the, the beginning of a kind of movement of people um, who are producing things like this, like producing, whether it's comics, whether it's movies, um, that are funded by their own audience, you know, and it's all, it's like the democratization of movie making, like, it's a cool thing to see, like, this is one little example, but like, there, I'm sure there'll be more after yeah. this. And what's, what's interesting, I don't know if from, you remember our early conversation we had, because that was not lost on me when I um, thought about talking to you, because I'm like, okay, yeah, you guys are firmly like talking about um you know what's going on in, in media and culture and and what you guys are seeing and and uh so it's not lost upon me that a lot of people have an expectation as to what this project is going to be and so my expectation for the film is to just be this fun action film that gets in we kill a bunch of people and we get out, you know, there's no fat, there's no, no silliness. It's just straight up, bam, bam, bam. And there we go. Should we, uh, should, do you think we should tell people that we've cast Tessa Thompson as Ryan Drake? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Cat's out of the bag now. Yeah, sorry guys. Uh, no, I mean like the, the the actor we've got, whose name is Ryan, coincidentally, which is yeah. which is nice. Um, yeah, I mean he's already in training for this. Um, oh, yeah, I man. think you're, you're going to get some footage of him of him like killing it in the gym. But he's he's going through military training as well, um, so he's actually yeah. getting taught how to to properly, you know, sweep clear rooms, um, handle weapons properly, so he doesn't look like a complete amateur and. Um, yeah, he's taking it seriously, man. Again, he's he's really putting in the work already, and we're we're a few months out from actually shooting this thing, but he wants to be ready for it, and I think that's yeah. that's great. You know, the cool speaks well about, of his character. Yeah, the cool thing about Ryan is I've known him for years, and I've cast him in a lot of projects. And the reason being is he is very committed to what he does. He's a great actor, number one, but he has range, and doesn't matter what we do, um, he's he's pretty much up for it. And uh, yeah, it was it? It was like on the. It was on Saturday. We had him out. We went out in a field, and I was filming it. Um, and it, he he's already been in the gym training, but this was like his first like, uh, um, one with like a military instructor doing some hardcore training, and uh, it was a it was a hard thirty minute session, and he looked like he was dead by the end of it. Uh, and he's already in shape so that's like we're yeah. <laughs> we're putting him through his paces he's putting himself through his paces so yeah big kudos to him he he is definitely um in fact you know what the thing he's worried the most about honestly is not any of that stuff it's like nailing the accent is, yeah is what's got him shitting his pants <laughs> he, he i mean because uh you know Again, for the people watching this, like I, I'd seen some kind of uh, some test footage that you'd run of him, and is it Rebecca who's going to be playing Anya? Yeah, we've got her listed up there to play as Anya. Yep. Yeah, so the the two of them just kind of running a scene from the the script, and he's he's not far off accent wise, like, um, and that was like the very early stages. So he's got months to to keep going with that and and yeah, hone it in. But uh, he's done all right. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that should go a long way to, like, calming him down a little bit. Like, uh, punching guys in the face, he's already done that before. Like, we, he and I did an action short together called Vengeance Remains, and that was without any stunt coordinating. That was him and I just figuring out a fight scene and, like, training months in advance. And, like, the, yeah, he, he knows how to do all that stuff. He knows how to look intimidating. He, he can pull that off. Um, so I don't think uh, if anyone was worrying about that, I, I would worry because uh, I'm just kind of going through the comments because there's a bunch of super chats come in as well that I'll, sure. yeah. I'll absolutely get because I know people are going to want to ask us loads of questions as we go so uh, the other one was from NP who says Anya's casting is my main concern my favorite character in the books so yeah um, that was another one that um, obviously we wanted to get right um, in terms of finding an actress that um, you know she can handle the kind of physical demands of the role because she needs to be able to kick ass um, and um you know, she has to be intimidating. She has to be intense like Anya is. And I think we found a pretty good one for this. Um, again, from the scenes that I've seen, the the, the test footage, uh, yeah. she already looks pretty good. And I think she's hitting the gym as well to get yeah. prepped for this. Um, so, yeah, like uh, Rebecca's looking pretty good so far. Uh, what was the other one that came in here? Uh, yeah, there's one here saying, so is this going to be a full 90 minute film or a short 30 minute film? So it's it's a 30 minute job because you, you've kind of got two options here. Like with the budget that we now have, we can give you a really good like 30 minute short film with good action sequences and good production value. Or we can give you a really shit cheap looking feature film. <laughs> like... So it's a case of like pick your poison, really. Which which one suits? Um, you know, I'd, I'd rather start like small as a first step with this and do something really good quality than go for yeah. quantity. You know? so, so my thought process on it is uh, on any project that I do is leave them wanting more, leave the audience wanting more. You want people to watch uh, a project, um, and in this case, Rogue Elements. You want people to watch it leave and go, damn, I wish that was a full feature-length movie, as opposed to watching a half-assed feature-length film and going, eh, it's all right. Like, yeah. Right? The, well, I mean, yeah, 100%, because 
you know, when you have to stretch budgets and, um, well, particularly with the script that we'd written, like we, we would, if we tried to make this into a feature film, we'd have to go straight back to the, the drawing board and start completely again as well. Um, and you don't want to necessarily do that because the story that we've got is nice and self-contained. It sits within the chronology of the Ryan Drake books. Um and it, it tells a self-contained story with lots of references to what happened in the books. But if you haven't read any of them, it doesn't matter. Like, there's enough for you to latch on to and um, appreciate it. But yeah, with something like this, I wouldn't want our first effort to be like, hey, we're going to do an entire feature film, you know, with, with this, you know, this budget. It's like, yeah, I, I don't want to I don't want to try and stretch it to that. I would rather do something really good quality. Yeah, and if we were going to base it off of your books, like your books are like globe-trotting things, like they're all over the place. Uh, the producer side of me we would be crapping my pants just trying to figure out how the hell to even pull that off on on a small budget, even if we were in just one area. Like th this is a thing that people uh, kind of miss when they see once you start um, getting into this money. It looks like a lot of money, but it that evaporates very quickly. Like, um, cause you have to pay everybody. Um, just think about this. Um, if someone wants to do some math, like let's say we have 40 people working on the set, uh, actors and people behind the scenes, well, they all need to be fed. And let's assume that the minimum price per meal is $10 per person. So that's $30 a person times 40 people. And let's say we film for 12 days. Like that's a massive amount of money gone just to feeding people. Right. So yeah. that, that money just goes, you know, if you're not careful, um, that money can evaporate very quickly. But luckily for us, we have a lot of really talented people behind the scenes that um, Carson and Max have been bringing um, slowly bringing into the fold that once this Kickstarter is done and we know what our final budget is, they're going to be breaking down our script and we'll know how many days it's going to take to shoot, how much it's roughly going to cost based on the script that we've handed in. Um, and then we can go from there and see, okay, what, what action sequences can we do? Can we put more money on this? Can we put more money over here? Blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really grateful that I don't have to be involved in any of that complex stuff. <laughs> like... <laughs> it's, it's the stuff no one thinks about when it, when it comes to movie making. And I've done it enough now to, on, a, a, on a smaller scale, but it, I mean, it's, it's, it's the principles the same. It's, you still have to, to put your money in these places properly because if you don't then uh, again, it's, it's just... yeah it, it's like project management really isn't it for the entertainment industry yeah. that that's yeah. all it is and it's like you know trying to balance a hundred different things simultaneously so yeah it's it's not easy and um even you know even on a relatively small scale thing like what we're doing here um you know it's still a massive undertaking there's a lot that has to be organized to make sure you don't just fritter that money away because that's that's obviously what we're going to avoid with this one um we want to make sure that every possible dollar of what we raise from the kickstarter is up on screen to produce like the best the best end product as possible yeah yeah 100 percent yeah, uh, people asking here. Seriously, why are people being fed on set? Like, <laughs> uh, God, ask them to bring a packed lunch or something. Really? <laughs> so that's a legitimate question. It's like, why do you have to feed people? Why can't they just bring their own food or whatever? So here, here's the problem with letting people just go go about their business. So let's say we break for lunch, and everyone has like a half hour lunch or something like that, and then <clears throat> you know people bugger off somewhere to go grab something to eat and they get stuck in traffic and all of a sudden my camera operator is nowhere to be found or <laughs> Ryan Drake is stuck in a McDonald's line and why is he eating McDonald's at this point but he's you know like and then all of a sudden you, you're ground to a halt and you wasted more money because people are not back on set it, it's just a thing it's just how it is um and it, it is faster and more economical to do it that way yeah no I, I get you um it's something to look forward to as well because I know like when I, when I used to be an extra, um, you know, like when you break for lunch or you, you have dinner or whatever, it's like, ah, it's something to do for a little while. You know, it gets you out of, out of the green room for a bit. <laughs> it's good. 100%. Yeah. Being an extra is not as glorious as it sounds. Uh, it, it really is not, no. Uh, well, it's I don't like, know if being an extra sounds glorious at all. I don't <laughs> Yeah. You, you kind of imagine, like, it's you're always, like, one moment away from getting, like, a speaking part and meeting some amazing, like, actor, and that's your ticket to fame and glory. But, um, yeah, it's it's just 95% sitting around waiting to be yeah. called to set, and then, like, 
percent just um you know sitting somewhere in the background pretends to hold a conversation um and yeah just miming basically so it's yeah it, it's not great fun but you know that's the magic of movie making isn't it <laughs> it is it's uh what is it hurry up and sit around and hurry up so i can't remember the saying but it's like you basically it's like there's a lot of prep in between takes and then all of a sudden it's like go 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 and then it's yeah lots yeah. of time in between there, there's a great one uh saying please respect the tradition and use the wilhelm screen <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do it do it, should we give it to you if you show up on set yeah, 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 just like shot from a building or something, and like fall off. Like, yeah. Uh, there's, there's another screen that they use that's used in like loads of things. It's used in John Woo movies a lot, where it's like it's not that it's not the Wilhelm scream, but it's like uh, yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to describe it, but it's that, and I've used it in my own videos a few times. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very accurate representation of that scream, by the way. Yeah, uh, if we could, if only we could get Sam Neill in just to scream for us for like a few seconds. Hundred percent. I'd, I'd happily use that. Yeah, I wouldn't use him on screen because it's too distracting. But yeah. you know, <laughs> just get him to scream. Um, but yeah, let's uh, give me one second actually, because there's a, like I say, there's a whole bunch of super sure. chats that have yep. come in while we've been talking, um, and yeah. Like I say, it's a good opportunity for us to answer people's questions. So, two seconds while I bring them up. And this is the point where YouTube says, no, nah, I'm not doing that for you. Uh, okay. So, yeah, the first one that came in was from GS Pena, who says, uh, will you consider Tatiana Neva for the film? <laughs> I've seen pictures of her and she's fantastic. Um yeah, we could have we could definitely have her playing Anya, but um I think we'd have to blow the entire budget just on her and we'd only get her for about four hours. So I don't know if that's gonna work, unfortunately. Uh but it'd be nice to think about it. Uh Daniel Monroe says, Yes, drink around the team after this project, and if you decide to create more short films, will they be based on the books or separate material like Rogue Element says? Great stuff, gents. Cheers. So that's a really good question, actually. Um and I think uh, this opens the door really for us doing a whole bunch of different things if we want to. Um, yeah, I think if we don't if we don't drop the ball, which I don't plan on doing, um, then I yeah I love this world that you've created so much that um, you know it'd be so fun to play in this and like you've got enough books that uh, like. I don't have any more hair left to lose, but like I <laughs> just get old and wrinkly and just be doing this for the rest of my life would be fine by me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, here's a question as well. Uh, Drinker gets killed in a cameo? I, I I think maybe we could make that happen. Probably. I've been telling him he has to. I think so. Yeah. Uh, honestly, like, uh, you know, if, if schedules line up, it would be fantastic to, to go out and um, watch a little bit of it get filmed. And if... Uh, you know, if I could be on screen for a couple of seconds and just get shot or something, um, that would be kind of cool. But so uh, I'm not going to be like acting in it in any capacity like that. Like that's that I've got no desire to be an actor or to star in my own movie or any of that nonsense. Like, yeah, uh, it would just be a quick, you know, one and done kind of thing. Uh, but it would be fun to do, you know, just as a little Easter egg there. So who knows? We'll see what we can do. Uh, yeah, the, another one was, uh, where will the movie be filmed? So I think that's going to be near Toronto, really, in Canada. Yeah, it's going to be somewhere in the Toronto area. I would I would love to actually film it in my hometown. I live in New Brunswick, Canada, on the East Coast, um, but there's not much of an infrastructure here, which, which is too bad. But um, So Max and his stunt team, um, and ev basically everyone's in Toronto. And so um, getting the best of the best... Um, that's where you got to go and that's where we're going to go and uh, I, I don't have exact location for um where we're shooting yet again that's going to come down to budget and what we can get um and depending on when exactly we plan on shooting this thing so that's all stuff that comes together after the uh after the uh kickstarter campaign is finished yeah uh Another very pertinent question. Can't wait for random 1980s tit shots. I mean, we, we can do that. <laughs> Hire a couple of local strippers. I'll just do it if you want me to, but... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> 
it wouldn't be an action flick if we, if we didn't include something like that. I think like they they just randomly burst into a room where a couple are having sex. That's right. You know, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, next one from. Um, Kevin O'Neill, who says, super excited for this project. What are your plans for the soundtrack? Uh, are you going to keep it simple or do you have something grander in mind? So here's a fun story for everybody. Um, the composer, Maxim Osipow, is um, he's the guy that's going to be working on it. He and I have worked on a ton of projects together. This guy is amazing. You can check out his... Um, uh, I don't know how to link it from here, but he, he's got a YouTube page with like scores from all my other shorts that we've worked on together. He's the one who scored that little teaser in the intro there. And he lives like five minutes down the road from me. So the awesome thing about that is uh, he and I can sit down and the way we work together is, is I'll let Max start on something. Um, he is, um, I call him Max for short. Uh, he, he is, 99.9% .9 bang on with what I'm looking for. And then I'll go in the studio and then I'll be like, Hey, can we put a little guitar here or a little French horn over there? And we'll test it out. Sometimes my ideas more cowbell. Yeah. More cowbell. Um, so, um, I haven't really started putting much thought into it again, not until the script gets a full breakdown, because if there's something that needs to be changed or whatever, I don't want to tie myself to like, any particular ideas or suites or anything like that um, before we really are locked on our script and and then we can go from there. Okay. No, that's fair play. Uh, next one is from Daniel Monroe who says, Pump for this. What are the plans for any hand-to-hand -hand fight scenes? Will they be close-up or wider shots with longer cuts? Can't wait to see it. So, yeah, that's a good question, actually. So, uh, my preference uh, as someone who's watching films is I love to see, um, I love to see the action. Um, if you watch any of my films, that's how I shoot most of this stuff, and I'm not even a good, like, fight guy. Um, I don't try to, I don't try to hide it. Uh, and the nice thing is with like legit stunt coordinators, like with Max, like there's no reason to hide this stuff. Um, I, I mean, sometimes the camera can get in there and, uh, you know, accent some of the fighting, but usually they do that just to kind of hide shortcomings, I think, or if there's timing issues, like setting up like a fight sequence to do one, you know, could take like a full week really on these major productions just to do like, just to do a simple fight sequence, all the coverage you got to do and all the lighting setups and stuff like that. That's where. Um, a lot of pre-planning on Max's part and his team's part is going to come into play. So we don't have to do that stuff. Uh, so my hopes and dreams are we don't get in there and do like super born identity shaky cam stuff. Mm. Yeah, please don't. Um, <laughs> I, I think the, the, the footage that, uh, that they were able to show um, over on the Kickstarter like was a good example of like there's there's decent stretches where you get to see them do some good choreography, but like the, the camera can move around dynamically and stuff. You can get the occasional like slow-mo shot of various things happening. Yeah. Um, so there's a good variety of things there. Yeah. Um, I guess some of it's going to come down to what the actors can, can do in, in terms of like long continuous um, combat shots and stuff. So uh, yeah, uh, as long as we don't have shaky cam, I'm fine. <laughs> no, I find that stuff vomit inducing. Absolutely. Uh, DS Pigeon says, biggest question, is it a self-contained short story or just a, an expensive action piece? Who is writing it? Uh, I guess I can probably answer this one. Uh, so yeah, I wrote the script. Um, so it's, uh, how can we best describe it? It's a self-contained story. It sits within the chronology of the, the Ryan Drake series because I, I didn't want it to obviously contradict anything. Um, and I set it fairly early in the series, so it basically takes place between the events of books two and three. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not crazy complex. There's not, like, loads of layers to the, the lore behind it. Uh, it's still relatively straightforward. Um, and, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, you know, it helps if you've read the books, for sure. It will give you a little bit more context to what's going on, but there's enough in this this short film that uh, you know it kind of explains what's going on anyway, so you don't need that. Uh, and that was my intent, really. It was to try and balance those two things out, so you know it can reward people that have, have read the books. There's little Easter eggs, there's um, there's references and stuff to previous events, but it's not going to leave you high and dry if uh, if you're not 
well up on it. So uh, that that should be that's how it's done. Um, and yeah, I, I basically wrote the script for it. Um, yeah, I know at one point we had gone down a rabbit hole where we were really trying to like super tie this into the books. And we yeah. Were, um, it was getting it, a little convoluted. Like you would call it out and I was like, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, we, we had a, a, a version of the script which was set much later in the series and so there was loads more layers to what's going on. There's loads of references to the, the events of the, the stories and I think the more I looked at it, the more I realized this is going to be way too much for people to process. It's way too much to try and cram in uh, to, to a script like this. It's just going to end up being convoluted and annoying. And I thought, no, let's simplify it a little bit. Let's move it move it back to earlier in the series. Uh, and it, it then gives you more scope for just doing things within the context of this story. So that's, that's my aim. Um, yeah. And yeah. I can sound all like confident saying this, but like we'll see if it plays out well on screen. But you know, this is this is I guess the thought process you have to go through when you're making something like this. Well, yeah, and, and the other thing that we're going to be doing here shortly is we're going to grab some. Um, we'll have Ryan, and we'll grab a few more actors, and we'll do a table read of the script and just get a good feel for you know, does this flow? Does it um, feel natural? Um, you know, there's some expectations that I think people should have going into a short film. Like if you're not used to watching short films, their short films leave um, a little bit more to the imagination. It, um, you kind of have to fill in um, beats in your own mind type thing. And that's part of the fun of a short film. Not to say that there's not character arcs or anything like that in here, but you know, we don't have a full two hours to give you this nice arc and you know, have, have Ryan start in one place and be in another place. We do have a little bit of that in there, but it's within a context of what you can do in 30 minutes or 25 minutes or whatever this ends up being type thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one from the, the Fox 2000 unit. It says, seriously, question, is this going to be a straight up 80s S quality action flick without woke shite? Uh, I can guarantee there's not going to be any woke stuff in it. <laughs> We're not about the message here. Um, yeah, that, I mean, you know, I, I take my cues, I guess, from, from people like James Cameron and stuff in terms of, like, how they write their characters. Like, uh, they're, they're, there's a couple of strong female characters in this, but hopefully they actually work well. You know, they're they're not invincible superheroes who are annoying as fuck. No, um, and here's, here's a teaser for, it, like, as the script stands now, there is an action sequence which um, you've written, which I will love to shoot as as the opposite of how fight scenes with um with action starlets turn out <laughs> yeah yeah so basically uh picture like a, a relatively small lightly built woman um who's well trained um and, and is like used to this stuff she's pitched against a, a guy who's much bigger and stronger than her like how is that going to get resolved um, so that that's what we're going to try and convey realistically. It's like, okay, she's not going to be able to overpower him. She's not going to be magically uh, bigger and stronger than him. Like, how does she how does she prevail against him? So that's that's what we're going to try and show fairly and realistically here. So that's that's the goal. And if you can do it, then it should work really well. So yep. I got good feelings about that. Um, Master of Puppets said, uh, Hail Drinker, can't wait to see Ryan Drake brought to life. When the film comes out, where will it be screening? On YouTube or elsewhere? And will Anya make an appearance? Oh, I'll let the cat out of the bag on that one then. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and, and maybe we were full of it and she doesn't make it. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's true, yeah. Um, yeah, in terms of the, the, the screenings and stuff, so it'll be done through YouTube. I'll probably do it as a premiere on my channel. So for the, you know, I guess first of all for the backers on Kickstarter they will get an advanced screening because you know they they've helped to make this whole thing happen so yeah. uh, we want to give them that and then uh, later we'll premiere it on on my YouTube channel and everyone will get a chance to see it so um, hopefully it's got access to a pretty decent audience I mean damn we've got like one and a half million subscribers now so that's yeah. that's not bad to start off with if I had it my way and, and I will push for it I think we should have a bunch of um in theater screenings with your with your fans because i think that would be super fun we just did um it's been a while since one of my films have been in a theater and i had this like short um cowboy comedy thing and 
it's one thing to like have two or three people watching and laughing at your jokes. It's another thing to have an entire theater laughing at your jokes. So take that and then flip it and have people just be like, whoa, when, you know, this guy gets killed a certain way or whatever, right? Or when Ryan Drake pops up on screen for the first time, just having that community of people there just enjoying this project. I think I will push for that. Hey, it'd be all right. I'll be at the bar if you need me. So like people can just meet me there afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like this the whole time watching. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Domino412 says, make it happen. Well, we are making it happen. Thank you very much, man. Uh, Mithridate says, Rogue Elements is uh, one of the movies of all time. It will be a movie. <laughs> yeah, the moviest <laughs> film you've ever seen. Uh, Alexander Johnson said, Super Chat. That is indeed what that is, so thanks. Uh, Drive By Commenter says, Since the Tom Clancy brand ain't what it used to be and Bourne's exhausted, maybe this could be the techno thriller franchise of the future. Uh, well, who knows? But um, I, I think there's, based on what I've talked to a few different people about in the industry, there, there seems to be a real hunger for these kind of um, like military themed thrillers. Uh, along that lines of like not Reacher necessarily, but you know he he's in that kind of world as well. But like the Terminal List was a big success, and they want more stuff like that, which is exactly what the Ryan Drake series is. So uh, who knows? Maybe there's a little niche for that as well. Uh, we can but hope. Um, but yeah, the, it definitely seems like that's becoming more of a thing now than it was a couple of years ago. So yeah, I'm, I'm almost just happy to see anything apart from superhero flicks for a while. Yeah. Um, Zagros Ozkan says, best movies all have iconic music. What genre and style are you envisaging for this movie soundtrack? I don't know yet. Uh, so the way I operate when it comes to that sort of stuff is um, I usually wait until I've really sat down and just fully immersed myself in the script. And right now I am super distracted because I'm like trying my best to run this Kickstarter thing. And I've, I've never run one before and uh, that's taking up a lot of time. And I also own a, a couple of businesses plus film stuff. So like my life is just like chaos. But once this is done and then I can just fully just like, like absorb this whole thing into my pores, that's kind of when that those types of decisions will, will really start to like form in my head. Yep. Um, someone mentioned here as well, a decent Mitch rap movie would be good. It would indeed. I just, I, I read American Assassin. Um, I think it was last summer. Really fucking liked it. I think he's a cool character. Um, anyway, I'll carry on. So... Cody Griffin says, very excited, glad I backed this. If you need an extra who's a trained infantry combat vet, then I've got you. Uh, I'll also do it for free. My only question, assuming this is well received, can we expect more? Um, so, first, I guess to deal with the first part of that, you know, if uh, we've got vets uh, and stuff who are interested in helping out with this, is there a, a, an option for them to pursue this? Yeah, I, I think, so the, the, again, the way this will kind of have to work, I think, is that once this has all been broken down and figured out and we've got locations and dates and things like that, there'll be someone who is not me who is going to be running the set and, um, and, and figuring out this sort of stuff. So that kind of information, yeah, I, I'm guessing what we should do and what I've kind of been doing on certain stuff is like just have a pool of people who are interested in doing that. Uh, sort of thing. But the the other thing, again, that you have to be careful about with, with stuff like this is you can be the most badass person ever, but the second you get in front of the camera, you shrink down to a small child. It's There's something about being in front of a lens and having like 30 or 40 other people just like off to the side with a boom pole and just, you know, kind of watching what you're doing type thing that just some people are not made for that and you don't know until you get in front of the camera and the last thing i want to have happen on a busy tight schedule is have a bunch of people who were well-meaning and wanted to come out and help the project and then have to be like sorry guys uh, this is not working out like that yeah. would be like awful for everybody yeah no it's uh i mean i know it well like it's weird 
when you get that feeling of a camera watching you, it's like just walking across the room suddenly becomes this weird exercise and like make legs move in, in a <laughs> yeah. natural way. Yeah, you don't know it. You don't know that feeling until you've been in front of the camera and then it's just like... <sighs> that is true. Uh, but yeah, what I could do, I guess, when we get to that stage is um, put out an, an announcement on my channel. Just say like, you know, if there's there's guys from that background um, mm -hmm. who yeah. are, are interested, um, maybe we can do a casting call or something and see how you do. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, okay, so next question was from Wasim Jie, who says, uh, I don't have a Kickstarter account, so here's my contribution, good sir. And that was for 50 New Zealand dollars. So thank you very much, man. VFX um, Jess says, Hi, will you be adding VFX or will you try and do as much practical effects and on location shots as possible? Just started the books, looking forward to the short film. So, yeah, this is, this is something that uh, I've been pushing for. Uh, certainly, and probably being a total pain in, in the arse for Travis, uh, saying like, look, as much as possible, I want like pyrotechnics, I want squibs, I want it to be stuff that's actually happening on set, rather than just, you know, doing it later with uh, with CGI and VFX, because um, that's the kind of movies that I grew up watching and absolutely loving. Um, obviously, it's more expensive, it's more dangerous, it's more time consuming, but... That's, yeah, that's the so the, the, the realistic answer is, is going to be a mix of the two, most likely. Um, uh, so I remember we were having a meeting with Max and Carson, and it, it was like, pick your moments. So once we go through the script, once we figured out the fight sequences and how they're going to play itself out, and when we know what those kind of like hero shots are going to be, and, you know, yeah, we'll squib some guys up. We'll uh, definitely do this stuff like that. But there's definitely going to be like CG has a place, a time and a place, and um, you know that it, CG is best used to sweeten stuff and to be used in a manner where it's done its job and you don't know that it's done its job. Yeah. Um, another one from Evan Malley says, will characters follow gun safety, i.e. keeping fingers off the trigger when not firing? Not a huge deal, but I like to see it. So yeah, that's the kind of details that we want to see. And it's that's, I guess, why Ryan's going through his military training for this. Yep. Um, practicing good trigger discipline is like one of those things that, you know, general audiences might not see. But if you've got vets or, or guys who really pay attention to that stuff, they're going to pick up on it. And it's just, yeah, it's a good yeah, little detail. I was spot. super self-conscious about that. Um, um, before even talking to you, I was like, yeah, if, if we're going to do this, it's going to have a certain audience. And, you know, they're going to they're going to see right through um, some stuff. And uh, so <clears throat> I feel like what's going to end up happening is we're going to be as realistic as possible with you know, those Hollywood flourishes that pop up from time to time type thing. Uh, you yeah. Know, you can't, you can't, like I was talking to Max about it, the stunt coordinator. He's like, yeah, he's like, you can't be super so strict that you're hundred percent following military procedure because then you're locking yourself into, uh, you know, a, a small corner um, and you won't be able to get out of it. So yeah, we will, we will definitely pay attention to stuff like that as much as we possibly can for sure. Yeah. Uh, we need to. We need a good mag change scene as well because if you can, if you can do that, if you can absolutely nail the the mag change, um, yeah, that will yep. give you a, a, give your actor a few brainy points as well. Yep. Um, Gieber says, "Please respect tradition." Oh yeah, that was, use the Wilhelm scream. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Uh, Ashernabog says, "Will you ever use? Uh, sorry, will you ever have an expanded Ryan Drake cinematic universe?" Uh, RDCU and will you eventually cameo drunk patron or wise old drunk but seriously excited to see how this turns out good luck <laughs> I'd, I'd love a Ryan Drake universe like a, a Drakeverse or something to be called yeah you've got yeah. enough cool characters that I think a, a bunch of them could hold their own yeah I think so um, yeah it's, it's you know that's what I always enjoyed about the novels it's like okay Drake's great Anya's great and stuff but like there's a whole cast of like supporting characters that I can have fun with as well and um that was always good just giving little you know little backstories to them or little like moments where they get to shine yep. and have little character moments uh, that was always fun for me as a writer uh just give me one second I just refresh this here uh yeah JS Pena says if you can't do it I understand I just wanted to help uh I think that was I'm, I guess referencing a previous question. Uh, oh yeah, will you consider Tatiana Neva for the film? Yeah, 
uh, I'd love to do that, but like, uh, like I say, I think she's a, a very expensive actress, so I don't imagine we'd be able to get her for this. Uh, but who knows? Um, six turn and four burning says, "Here's my contribution. Um, I now I expect outrageous demands from Drinker, like separate trailers each for the Critical Doggos one and two, and someone in the film saying, "Nah, it'll be fine." <laughs> That, that was for fifty dollars, so thanks, man. Yeah, if I'm coming to Canada, I'm bringing the critical doggos with me. They could be the uh, they could be the uh, patrol guard dogs. They would be the shittest guard dogs ever, because <laughs> like they they would just kind of wander off and go to sleep. Like they they are not good for that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, Iron Age Media says, "Hail, I have a fan submitted article about rogue elements lined up for next Tuesday." Would you or Travis be up for answering a few questions about the project via email to help flesh it out? Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know, man. Like, do, do you want to take this one or sure. do you want me to do I can, it? Or? I can field it. That's, that's fine. Whichever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, for, for the director of this, I think it'd probably be a good shout. So, uh, yeah, Travis could uh, help you out with this one. So, yeah, thanks, man. Uh, Hikira says, will you be doing a review of your own movie? <laughs> I mean, yeah, hopefully it's a drinker recommends, but it would be a bit self-indulgent to review my own film. Um, I, need, I need to bring Mauler in to like, absolutely tear it to shreds. Yeah, so that was the other thing I was super duper conscious about, and I think we had a conversation about it, is like, you know, we have to approach this super carefully because your whole thing is like, you know, you are a guy who takes and shreds terrible movies apart in a, in a fair way. And, uh, and so like having to have that kind of on the back of my shoulder the whole time while I'm doing this is, uh, is, is not lost on me at all. Yep. Uh, yeah, you'll have an army of drinker fans after you if this all yeah. goes wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get hair plugs and move somewhere so people won't know who I am. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, next one is from Daniel Munro says, uh, was impressed with your other work, Travis, and I can't wait to see what you bring to the Ryan Drake world. Um, random question. Do you prefer pizza or burgers? Oh, <laughs> uh, a good burger. I love burgers. I go out of my way to find burgers. So go uh, I would I would go down on the side of burgers as well. <laughs> uh, I love pizza as well, but uh, man, I think you get so much variety with them. With burgers. Also, thank you yeah. for the compliment. That's very humbling. Thank you. Uh, Domino four twelve says, "Is the film setting before or after Blacklist?" So, yeah, I can answer that very easily. It's uh, before Blacklist, so that's between books uh, two and three. So it's before the events of Betrayal. So that should hopefully uh, give you some insight into what's going on. Uh, Vladimir Taylor says, "Will Ryan barge onto a roof a rooftop and say, I did not shoot her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not. And then toss his gun into a corner. <laughs> if the filming is going in a certain direction, then yes, we will pivot and he will say that. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, in all seriousness, I'm happy for you, drinker. Best wishes. Uh, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, Shia Ladouche says, I'm an actor and a combat vet, but based in London. Is this shooting in Canada? Uh, yes, it is. So it's most likely going to be near Toronto. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely in Canada one way or the other. Um, Daniel Connery says, Hi, I'm one of the 31 executive producers. Damn, uh, joined this call late. Sorry, any update on the situation? Happy to contribute more, but I haven't found a way to contact anyone. Tried to uh, add Travis on LinkedIn. Uh, keep up oh. the great work. So yeah, um, this uh, yeah. So with the executive producers, we initially initially opened this up. It's one of the tiers of support that you can do on Kickstarter, um, and it was supposed to be limited to just a few. Um, but I ended up with like thirty odd people who who contributed to that, which was incredible. But um, it left us with a bit of a surplus of executive producers. You know, there's only so many you can have in the title. <sighs> You know in the credits and stuff so yeah. uh, what we're trying to do is off then offer them you know something that's um, of equivalent you know value to them but uh, just slightly different so we're trying to just you know trying to move that around a little bit and uh, we've come up with a couple of solutions that will hopefully um that will hopefully sort that for people and give them an option i guess yeah so the idea with that and, and trust me i feel like really crappy about that because it was like on the first day or something and someone was messaging and i i happened to be flying to toronto when this stuff was kind of like going down 
and uh, and as soon as I landed, I was like, oh god, no. And um, and then so uh, the the solution that we came up, which I think is the fairest, um, is that the top three, the first three people who backed, you know, they get their they get uh, the title card for executive producer. Now I can't we can't really force someone to move over but what i can what i was hopefully doing was is was opening up basically a platinum backer um and everyone you know still gets the splash title card um and uh you know for the inconvenience they get uh you know a signed uh copy of the script and maybe a couple other goodies and hopefully that is enough that people will try to transfer over. Now, part of the problem is, is that I um, I don't have direct access to everybody on Kickstarter yet. Like I, I can't talk to anybody um, individually. I can see who people are, but I have no way to talk. I've talked to Kickstarter about trying to group these people into a thing and message them, which I think- um, I can do that basically. Yeah. Uh, and, and then hopefully we can have a conversation about that and just figuring out a way to get everyone just on board. Because again, I, you know, super appreciate everyone who, who donated at that level. Like that was it's crazy. It was like, a, I was at work, um, at one point when it first, when the donations first started and I was like, what is happening? We, uh, uh well, we did it on a live stream, um, because like we, we just like sort of launched it that day and, uh, I had an open bar stream. And it was like, you know, we had this goal of reaching 20,000 pounds and uh, we were about 10 minutes into the stream. And I think Az just said to me, so you've hit your funding goal, dude. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> and yeah. it just went from there, you know? Yeah. Uh, so w one thing I guess we could potentially do is, um, you know, we can send out a link to, to all of those people, do a call with them. Yeah, and, let's just, and, and hash it out, hash it out that way. And just, you know, like I felt so friggin' bad on the, the next day like i'm a super empathetic person and it, it's uh i was like carrying this weight on me i'm like oh no we pissed everybody off on the first day no um so like yeah i would love to like just get this sorted so we can just kind of move past that and hopefully get everybody you know feeling good about the project uh bastard leech has got a good suggestion actually just do a trial by combat so the three that survive they can they can have their executive producer credit <laughs> yeah. yeah the rest of them will get their inheritance uh, but no, in all seriousness, we will, uh, yeah, like I say, we're working hard to give you guys just like a, a solution to this that uh, that can make everyone happy. So, uh, but yeah, thank you very much for your donation, Daniel Connery. Uh, Diano says, Smile and Terrifier are started as shorts from Small Acorns. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, like I say, the, the hope with this is that we can, we do it, we do it right. We produce something that everyone really enjoys. And then that opens the doors for us to do something much better bigger and more ambitious uh next time around and not yeah. necessarily having to you know ask people for for more funding for this because we you know i don't want to go cap in hand to my subscribers every every couple of years and be like oh can you give me more money to make yeah. another movie yeah you know like yeah. this this gives us the opportunity to attract attention from uh, like backers within you know within the industry yeah. uh, and so that that's the hope there um, Vulcan of Nocturne says, my favorite character is tended to die in the whale, uh, sorry, the Ryan Drake series. Any plans to kill my few faves that survived? Uh, hashtag Hawkins did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he got a backstory actually, which kind of, uh, you know, it, it shed some light on why he is the way he is, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, look, that, that's part of the fun of writing is that, you know, everyone kind of knows the main character doesn't die usually, but like it's the supporting characters that are the ones at risk. So if you can put a lot of work into making them likable uh, and then start killing them off, suddenly people are shitting themselves. It's like, oh man, you better not kill my favorite. Um, and you know, guys like uh, um, George R. R. Martin understood that very well. That's why Game of Thrones kills off so many of its characters because he could, he could put that work into to making really likable supporting ones. Oh, yeah, I was and, crying uh, like a baby at the Red Wedding. Yeah, yeah, it was shocking, but there it goes. You know, that's uh, that's what you can do. Mm. Uh, poor Wotan says, uh, will the last dialogue line be, go away now? I'm pretty sure it won't be in this film, but who knows what future movies might be like. 
Um, Taco God says, uh, get John Williams to compose a heavy metal soundtrack. Yeah, I'm sure we can definitely do that. <laughs> you know, he's just waiting for us to contact him. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Monroe says, will we see Ryan Drake with a pulse rifle? Uh, ultimate crossover. Uh, I would I would love to see pulse rifles used on screen, but probably it would be a bit strange in this movie. Uh, also, Travis, how long will the shooting and editing processes take? Well, so that's, again, that comes down to, so I had an idea of how long it was going to take on our initial uh, uh, initial script. So when I thought we were getting 30,000, that was always like a low tier expectation. And I had, had, I had done... Um, three kind of breakdowns of that script. I was like, okay, if we make 30, this is what it's going to be. If we make this, this is what it's going to be. And if we, wow, if we make this, which we blew past that, I was like, this is what it's going to be. And since we've blown past it, that's all out the window. And so again, it comes down to um, when someone whose job it is um, that, that do this for a living breaks the script down. Um, that will dictate how long it's going to take us to film. And then as far as the editing process, so I break, I break, there's a rule that um, directors shouldn't edit their own films just because editor, uh, directors tend to fall in love with stuff and they have a hard time cutting things. Um, so on this one where it's such a high stakes thing, you know, I've got a couple of, of, um, directors or not directors sorry uh, editors in mind um who are going to cut it but i feel like i'll probably do my own cut off to the side just as well um that's a long long-winded way to say i don't know i don't know how long it's going to take. <laughs> <laughs> the editing actually doesn't take that it doesn't take that long to get your first rough cut of it. it it for me personally it doesn't take that long uh just because i as soon as i'm done cutting i don't take a break i just <laughs> plunk down and I do my cut and then it's then I, I typically give it like two or three weeks to let that marinate and sit and then I can go back and go hmm this is working this is garbage this is doesn't need to be here and then once that's all done and then it's like then it goes off to people who have to do the post stuff like your your color grading and your sound design and all that stuff and that does take a little bit of time uh, fair play uh the most pertinent question, drinker, how much do you drink per day? Or how much drink do you use per day? That's an interesting way of phrasing it. Like uh, so probably you a, yourself? Yeah, I mean, probably the equivalent of a bottle of wine or maybe a third of a bottle of whiskey. So that's that's my average per day. And it's it's great. It keeps things ticking over just nicely. <laughs> Always got that youthful looking skin. Yeah, well, it, it's uh, it makes an afternoon pass really easily when you've uh, you've had a few drinks and then you can just pass out for an hour or two. It's great. You know? <laughs> uh, next one is from Robert uh, Barassa, who says, "Will there be a making of Rogue Elements?" Oh, I think you yes. can answer this. Yeah, there definitely will be. So, uh, so I've personally been going around filming behind the scenes stuff on things that we've done so far, but I'm definitely going to bring on um, someone to really film it so the idea is, is i think there's going to be two ways about it i'm kind of following the lord of the rings the good one um how they did it so they had like little production diaries that basically anyone could see and it doesn't give you much it just shows you hey this is what we're doing this is we're up what we're up to but at the end of the day I also have like a, just a nice full-fledged documentary that gives you the beginning, middle, and end of not, I, I, and, and this is just, this is still just in my head of like, not just the movie making process, but I would love to get and sit down with the drinker and just properly talk to him about uh, you know, his books and stuff like that in a documentary format. Not saying that's going to happen, but like, these are all things that are turning in my head um, for that stuff. I can't wait for you to ask me questions about like specific scenes that I totally can't remember writing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. How, what, how long ago was your first book? Like eight, nine years ago? Oh Christ, man! That was like um, I wrote it in like 2011. So yeah, you're talking like 11 years ago now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, like they start to get a little bit hazy back then. Uh, I always hate it when people like reference chapters or page numbers or whatever. It's like as if I've got a fucking encyclopedic knowledge of where everything sits in my book. But like if you say it's the bit after when Drake does this thing, like that's when it jogs my memory. You know. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's 
I'm sure it'll come back to me. You know, I can get it. <laughs> uh, Jane Hamlet says, are there any small parts left to audition for or is it cast? Great to hear from Travis and looking forward to seeing your books in live action. So yeah, that's a, that's a good question, actually, because there's quite a few... There is quite a few roles when you break it down, I suppose. Is, yeah. yeah, so really, um, there, yeah, there's a lot to, to get through as far as casting is concerned. Um, there are some really cool parts. There's some smaller parts that are still pretty cool. Excuse me, a couple of people have some really cool death scenes. So um, yeah, there's, there's, there's ample characters around. Uh, again, I think that'll come down to talking to the rest of the team about how we go about casting that stuff. So here's the other interesting thing and the, like the, the boring stuff that people don't like to think about when they're making movies is we, we've also crossed into this weird world now where we are going to, like if, if we're using legit actors, we have to use in Canada, it's ACTRA. And there are rules about that stuff. And I'm not 100% super versed on it. I've been going through like paperwork this thick about it. And there are producers whose job it is to know all of that stuff. So there are rules and things about who I'm allowed to cast and so on and so forth, um, just based off of, of, of a union type thing. So, uh, I mean, I guess keep your eyes and ears open for casting calls. Um, I don't know how that's going to play itself out j j at the moment. Okay. Um, Guillermo Sanchez says, Hi, Drinker. Uh, will you have a cameo on the movie? Or will you be killed violently in it? I hope I do. Like, if I if I am in it for a few seconds, then I hope I get shot or something like that or blown up. That would be good fun. Um and you're in price says hi drinker big fan is there going to be a physical release i'm a blu-ray sucker and would love uh, a blu-ray to live next to my little drinker plushie that would indeed be cool um, all right i can answer that question sort of so I, no one's a bigger fan of physical media than me like if you could take a tour i have a theater room downstairs i've got a massive 4k projector with a permanent theater screen and i've got hundreds and hundreds of Blu-rays and 4K uh, physical media. And uh, so I've been looking into companies to like produce the Blu-rays and I found one that is part of like the Kickstarter thing where it's like, hey, if you're looking to produce stuff, these guys make Blu-rays. So I, I got in touch with them and to like master it and like get a master print and then have that stuff printed off, done looking professional, all that stuff. I have, we have to do a minimum order of 500 Blu-rays. And I think that, we could probably do that. Uh, yeah. And so my thought process is, is I don't want to do any of that stuff for the Kickstarter. I've like, I've intentionally avoided a lot of physical stuff and we can get into that in a second. Um, but I think post once it's done and, and all that stuff, then we can have a store up and and kind of go from there um, with with merch and, and Blu-rays and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, the, the most pertinent question here is saying, will your dogs make a cameo? I don't know. Let's test them. Smokey. Smokey. Nah, that's not going to work. He doesn't respond to commands. So, yeah, he wouldn't be very good on set. Uh, and also, do you like sake? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind it, to be honest, uh, as long as it's served at room temperature. But uh, I remember a night out in Dundee where we did a, sh a round of shots of sake. And it's the one of the few times I saw my mate Al um, absolutely blow chunks all over the, the bar. Um, he, he turned green and immediately ran away. And then we just saw, like, vomit marks down the wall <laughs> leading to the bathroom. Um but he got he got a doner kebab in, in him that night, and uh, he was right as rain after that. So uh, that was impressive. Not many guys can spew on a night out and then you know pull it back, but he did. So that was that was pure determination right there. <laughs> what was it they say in John Wick? He's a man of focused determination and sheer fucking will. <laughs> that was him that night. <laughs> uh, next one was the real. Keegan Jones says, are you guys looking for a composer? I, I don't think so in this case, because I think we, we do have a guy um, who's going to be doing this. Um, Cameron says, hey, Drinker and Travis, I'm the executive producer on the project. Really looking forward to the whole process. 
Excellent. And uh, yeah, you're one of one of several executive producers that we got at the moment. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for your donation, man. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a lot more coming for you in, uh, in the near future. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of the super chats that have come in, so it's all good, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to keep you for too long, Travis, because I know you've got you've got a shit ton of stuff to do. But um, yeah, I hope uh, the people that have watched this, you know, you guys have had a chance to like learn a bit more about what we're doing with this and the stuff that has to go on behind the scenes in order to make something like this film happen. Um, it's a it's a pretty pretty detailed process, and there's a lot of work that that gets done. Um, but yeah, that's what goes on. And um, yeah, I guess I want to say thanks to you, Travis, for joining us for this tonight and answering all these questions. I know you've been put on the spot with a lot of this stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, and I just want to say it's uh, super humbling. Like I know everyone is here for the drinker and, and his books, but uh, you know, it's super humbling to be able to be part of the project. And um, you know, I, I, the whole team um, is working really hard to make sure that this project is something that everyone who backs can feel proud that they did that. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting into the thick of things and getting behind the camera and just starting to shoot the crap out of this thing. Yeah, that's what you want after all this. It is like, I don't want to be, you know, organizing all this pre production stuff. I just want to actually yeah. like shoot footage and have things blow up and stuff. So that's. Yeah. Uh, that's all good, yeah. But like, I will do my best to to make sure that there's as many explosions, gunfights, and boobs as possible in this <laughs> this short film. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, but yeah, for everyone who's joined us tonight, thank you very much. Um, thank you for all the super chats. You've been awesome as always. Uh, thank you for all the people from Kickstarter, like one for donating in the first place and making this happen, and two for for you know coming in and uh, you know and chatting with us and asking questions very much appreciate it and uh yeah watch this space i guess you're going to be hearing a lot more from us uh, in the near future um but for now that's all we've got for today so go away now